Hey YouTube, Windraiser here. Today coming to you with another Transformers review. Today I'm going to be looking at Transformers Generation 2 Universe Toxitron from the Walmart exclusive Toxic Lime. I don't know much on this character. <laughs> All I know is that he is supposed to resemble Optimus Prime by having his same his power and his strengths. But at the same time, he this character secretes a corrosive acid that eats through Cybertronian alloy and anything he touches. Um, what I do know of him is if I'm wrong, please forgive me, uh, that he was a fan-made character during a year of BotCon, I believe. I could be wrong. I don't know. But the lore is that he, the lore is, and if I read this correctly on TF Wiki, he was built by, uh, I think it was Shockwave and Bonsai Tron, or no, Shockwave and Bludgeon built him to duplicate Optimus Prime and his powers and everything and to have him work for them, the Decepticon cause. Well, he is a Decepticon, but he doesn't follow their rules and ideals and does his own thing. If that makes sense. Um, like I said about other characters, I don't know um, him. I'm definitely going to put his TF wiki link down in the description below. So that will be there. But first I want to take a look at his trailer. Now he is a repaint of the G2 Laser Optimus Prime, which was a repaint of the RID 2000 uh, Velocitron 500 Scourge. But his trailer is now done in purple, black, and we have these bits of um, toxic ooze oozing out of areas of the trailer. The back here we have a nice gunmetal gray. I do like it. Um, just like the other ones, he does have the stand here. Oh, mine's a little tight, so it can rest fully. Now, we'll move him off the side real quick. Um, he does have ports here, here, two on either side, and two in the back. I have some weapons of some other G2 Toxotron figures I have that I forgot to bring with me to record and do the reviews. So their reviews will be done much later when I can get around to it. But I do have the weapons of the G2 Mirage, unused colors, and the unused G2 colors of Jazz. So what we can do with these is we can place our weapons along the trailer. Lake Sioux. And we have all of these. I mean, heck, you could probably put this like that and just shoot it off. But he can hold, he has ports to hold weapons. <laughs> I find that to be very cool. Um, I'm going to use these weapons again in a minute. The trailer, too, can also transform. So according to directions, you will sand it up like this. Go ahead and open up the sides. Or lift this up first. Go ahead and open up the sides. Fold this piece down. Bring this around like so. Bring it down. Bring this down. And in turn, fold this down like that. Fold this back, and go ahead and fold this out. And there we have what's called his um, its base mode. Now inside he has his weapons. He does have his, his acidic axe, just like Prime's, except done in a nice translucent green color. And he does have his acidic sword. Very nice. We'll go ahead and set these off to the side, and we'll go ahead and use them for um, Toxitron later on. So I'll go ahead and look in here, and you can see he has not 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ports on the inside. And what I like to do, keep that right there, is rotate all this around, have it facing this way. And we can go ahead and plop all the guns, well, the ones that we can, anyways. And these little ports in the trailer. I'll put that one sideways. And there we have his trailer. We'll bring it this way. There we go. And now we have his trailer ready for battle. Now this piece here does come off. And it does act as a secondary gun, which does interact with Toxitron in his robot mode. And we'll get to that later. So we're just going to keep that there. Pull back just a bit. And we'll go ahead and bring in Toxitron. Now, like I said, his axe and shield do in, do, can incorporate it into this mode. So we'll go ahead and close this up. Go ahead and take the sword. Come under here. There is two spots right here and here for these two little pegs to plug into sort of plug in just right there and the axe will plug into those two ports right there like so so if you want to have them stored in the trailer they can store it in the cab just fine and he can still roll with the sword underneath so go ahead and take those out. Take out the sword. The only thing I don't like about the sword being underneath him is it does bend it a bit. So I keep him in the trailer. Now we'll go ahead and take a look at Toxitron up close. And it's a nice, nice toxic green. And this is one of my favorite types of green. <laughs> we got some silver, some gunmetal gray. Uh, like a pinkishy magenta here for the windows. I've got some purple for the wheels. All around beautiful green throughout the entirety. The only problem I have is with mine is that his fists, what will be his fists, don't stay in place properly. Some nice detail here where the uh, trailer will hitch. And tail lights here. Very nice. Does have a nice, beautiful G2 Decepticon insignia. There is the top of the cab. There is the bottom. Uh, unlike Scourge, these actually kind of stay in place. They don't. Ha I don't have trouble with them going, sinking in, uh, moving them when I'm trying to spy the truck. But we're gonna go ahead and get into his transformation. First off, take these, fold them in till they click. Done. Come here to what will be the toes. Go ahead and fold those up. Fold out the heels. Done. Come to these little panels here. Just go ahead and flip those up. They're pegged in by this little tiny peg. That little tiny peg fits in that little tiny slot. Now what I like to do, go ahead and bring the legs down like so. Take will be the kneecap covers, fold those in. Yeah, the legs all done. And now we have Gur walk, Gur walk truck mode backwards. <laughs> Next, we're gonna go ahead and bring these up. And before you do that, bring up the cab, the hood of the cab, like so. Then bring these down. And what I like to do. Go ahead and right, rotate them sideways on both sides. Once you got that, you can go ahead and do this. Bring this up. Rotate him at the waist. Go ahead and take the top of the cab here. Undo it. Bring these up. Leave this all like that. 
going to do here, bring what will be his chest piece out and his belly. And that will snap into place like so. Next, we'll go ahead and bring up the head. Not all the way, because you want these pieces to swing in like so. And as they swing out, go ahead and bring these up. Now I'm getting close for this. Just bring these up, and they will slot into little slip slits right here. And while I'm here, there's some nice detail right there. Some nice wiring. Go ahead, bring that up. Slide it in. Once those are in place, you can bring the arms in. And they will clip into place like so. Go ahead and bring that down. Take all that into place. Bring these down until they snap. And fold these panels down. Go ahead and flip up the head. Come here to the back panel. Get this gray panel out. And it's a little easier said than done. And it will come out. Go ahead and close this back up. And what that does is just it fills in the back part. It fills in that back part right there. Undo the legs. Rotate the arms in the proper orientation. Go ahead and open up the forearm covers and fold the fist down. Same on the other side. Open up the forearm cover, bring out the fist, rotate it, fold that down. And there we have Toxitron in his robot mode. And <laughs> if Prime wanted to be evil, this would be the color scheme he would pick, um, according to me, of what I would see him as. Right, we're gonna make my list up just a bit. There we go. Now we got him in full view of the camera. That he is a beautiful figure. I do like the head sculpt here. I like the detailing of the gunmetal throughout the shoulders and the chest. The black here on the tummy, the purple for what will be what is the grill. That got some more of that neon green up here. Just all around beautiful figure. The top, top of the truck cab, like always, becomes his backpack. And then you've got the molded in thrusters here, right here, which fill out the back cavity. Very nice. And that head sculpt is just beautiful. Posability on him. The head can rotate a full 360. Can look up and down and side to side. The arms, move the shoulder pad out the way. There is a uh, forward and back. It is on a uh, detented ratchet. A very soft ratchet. There is in and out. And just like Scourge, it stops at certain places. And bicep swivel. 90 degree bend at the elbow. Wrists do rotate because they are on a ball joint. Waist rotation, legs kick forward that far, back that far, out that far. There is a, there is a thigh swivel. He has a bend at the knee, over 90 degrees, and it is uh, ratcheted very softly. Toes can move up and down, and so can the heels. And there is ankle tilt. Uh, arms are not hindered by this shoulder pad. They can move forward and back with it up. And it does accommodate for movement out of the way. Uh, hitting accessories on him. And just like Scourge and Prime before him. Open these up. And now we have orange, clear orange plastic acid missiles. And I find those to be pretty damn cool. Are pretty dang cool. I, I do like that touch. 
very nice. And just like Prime and Scourge before him, he does have his own matrix. And his is all orange. And it does come out. But it's just an orange piece of plastic. Very glittery, very nice. I do like it. Now, with his other accessories, like I said, he can hold some of them. One being the turret here from his um, trailer. According to directions, it says you can place it here. You can place it here in his hand to have him hold it. Or, by this peg, you can place it in any one of these four holes on his shoulder. I don't know why you would do that. Or, you can just place it here on his back. Me, personally, I like to keep it there with the trailer. But for his other weapons, there's a reason why I'm leaving the Matrix out, because you'll see in a bit. He can hold his axe. And his sword. And he can hack, hack, stab, stab, hackity, hack, stabity, stab. And while these are open, he can shoot people. Size by size comparison with the only two things I have right now is my core class swoop and Lego Beast. And I think Lego Beast can hold the matrix. Hold on. I'm going to try something. Yes, he can hold the matrix. Lego Beast is holding the Matrix. <laughs> That's pretty cool. But his weapons, his sword and shield, sword and axe can do another thing. Just like the other figures before him, they do combine. This is supposed to go all the way down. I'm not forcing it because I'm not going to stress this beautiful plastic. You can also... There's a peg right here. There's a hole in the back of the Matrix. And this is on the box art, I kid you not. It has the matrix pegged on like that to where he is wielding the axe. As a mate as his acidic matrix sword. Which I find to be very, very cool. Um, we can peg the other weapons on him if we so choose. But I'm just happy to have this guy in my collection now. So there you guys have it. There has been my review for the Transformers Legacy G2 Universe Toxitron from the Toxicity line of Walmart. This is the only place I know here in the States that you can find him at. Um, you can also find him online. Uh, Walmart.com Uh... TF Source, eBay, Macari, wherever. Just some places beware of what you're paying for. But if you don't have the Prime, and if you don't have Scourge, he is definitely a must pick up, especially for this toxicity line with uh, with other characters in this line that are in G2, unused G2 colors. There are two more figures I do need to get, and hopefully I can get them. Hopefully very soon. I found one. There's another one I want to get, but I haven't found him. But we'll see. Again, I'm Windraiser, and I'll catch y'all on the next review.